What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCougar here on a very special episode, welcoming back. Thad Williams is not here today. Uh, I was told literally two minutes before we started rolling cameras, uh, there is a technical issue here at Collider, but guess who? Luckily, I was just <laughs> waiting. Guess who's here? It's Sinead DeFraze! I was just waiting in the parking lot, hoping that somebody would come out and ask me <laughs> to be on a show. Jo Josh? Yeah, exactly. Do, do I'm like, talk? <laughs> hey, uh, uh, did you need me for something? Because I'm here. <laughs> I was just wandering around Burbank, uh, and here you are. Here I am. Trying to get some Black Friday sales, uh, you know, five days later, <laughs> and, and here I am back. That's Sinead, right. welcome back. What's been going on? A oh, lot you know, of drums. Yeah, a lot of drums, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, not much, you know? Yeah. Don't have a job. Okay. You know, enjoying <laughs> the unemployed um, depression. No. Just kidding. Uh, no, uh, it's been great. Okay. Just got back from New York. Yeah. Um, flew into Newark okay. for the third time. I don't know why I keep I, doing that to myself. I always fly Burbank to Newark. That's my flight. Well, see, I don't. I need to go to. I need to fly into Newark. Put that mic up a little bit closer to your mouth, oh, just yeah. Because this room has a slight echo to it. That's all. Is that better? Yeah. There oh, you go. Whoa. See, it's a thousand me. times better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's been a while. Here, it's been a while. Um, I'm like, I don't know who I am anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know why I keep doing that to myself okay. because I need to fly into Newark on a day where it's not gray and brown or uh -huh. whatever because it is the it's not the bright feeling when you get when off. You, yeah, but also think about this. See, at Newark, which is great, you can jump on that train and be right in the yeah, Penn I do Station, like that. real easy. Uh, last year I flew into JFK. It took me two and a half hours to get yeah. into the city because I was like, oh, let's take an Uber. Nope. Yeah. And then three hours to get back to JFK, whereas Newark's just way easier to access. I feel it's like I'm true. giving away a secret. No, it is true because the train is super worth it. But yeah. like, I don't know if it was just because it was like the the weekend right after Thanksgiving, even uh, though we came back on a Tuesday. But I know people are flying yeah. out a lot this time of year. It was just, it was rammed and it was so ugly. Yeah, it's gross. And it's like so weird. And it makes me sad because I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, where is... Where is the nice thing yeah, to look at? It's, uh, I mean, I loved living in New York for a time, but there were so many days where I was just like, oh, I hate this. I, it's Because it's Pittsburgh weather in a city. I mean, it's just a really yeah. busy city with Pittsburgh weather. Yeah, but the food is amazing. Oh, and I will say that people in New York are some of the friendliest. And I really enjoy that because it kind of reminds me of Chicago because mm -hmm. people in L.A. like, they suck. <laughs> Myself weird. included. We all suck. It's weird how the, the flip happened. You know why? It's because people have to walk and talk to each other in New yes, York. Yeah. And everyone in LA drives. So like when we mm -hmm. meet people, we're like, mm, like it's so awkward. <laughs> Hello? You uh, like walk into a uh, store and they're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, when I say when I go up to like a um I don't know, like say I'm at a grocery store or even at, at an airport. When I go up to the, the ticketing agent and like at the Southwest, I'm like, hey, how's it going? And they're like, Here's your ticket. Yeah, like, they're like so taken aback by like why you're speaking to why them. Why are you being and nice? Why are you, why are you happy? <laughs> like why are you just, happy? Just trying to shed some yeah. some sunlight in but this world. But New York, they have really nice people and the food is incredible. Oh man, Pete, I could just I could give you ten pizza places off the top of my head because that's all I ate. When yeah, I was there, it's so it's the good. Best. Uh, okay, we've got some TV to talk about. I, I miss talking TV with you every week. Yeah, uh, I've been watching a lot of it these days. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I wonder when the unemployment jokes are gonna <laughs> just get sad. <laughs> uh, mine just started getting sad like month four. No, okay. All right. <laughs> and then I got hired again. Awesome. Well, I got some time then. Uh, let's try and get you hired over here. That's the, <laughs> that's the goal. Um, so first, before we get into the show, uh, you guys can subscribe to the channel here, Collider Podcast. Uh, if you aren't subscribed and you're just a Collider subscriber and you haven't subscribed over here, subscribe over here because this is where TV Talk uh, lives. Also, the Collider TV Talk podcast feed on iTunes. It's its own situation. So uh, you guys can watch the main show here at Collider TV Talk every Friday and Hypothetical Questions with Josh and Roxy on Wednesday. Uh, we're, we uploaded a few like separate reviews, but they didn't do the greatest number. So we're going to put them into the main show, which is why today Sinead is here because Sinead and I both watch Narcos Mexico. Hell Yeah. And we, at the end of this show, the last thing we do will be a spoiler-heavy talk about Narcos Mexico. Oh, I'm so ready. I think that after Narcos Mexico, Narcos became my favorite Netflix series. Like, it is now, yeah. it, it, like, it seceded, it's above Ozark, it's above, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's above Peaky Blinders, but if it, we're talking Netflix original, because Peaky Blinders is a BBC series right. that, that Netflix takes. right. But if we're talking Netflix original, like this is their IP Americana style. Yo, I Narcos. got so into it. Like I pretty much convinced myself I was Mexican. <laughs> like I'm not even kidding. I was like walking around the house, like 
<laughs> saying things I can't say right. on the air, right. like straight up. And yeah. my boyfriend was like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Stop it. And I've been like speaking so much Spanish lately too. I'm like, oh, oh, like uh, all the time. Yeah. But I loved it so much. I can't wait to talk about it. Miguel Felix Gallardo. Uh, it was amazing. And this was the kind of show that Amanda won't watch. So there were points last weekend or the weekend where I'm just like, it was the weekend before because I finished it right before we left for Thanksgiving. So it was the weekend before Thanksgiving. She's out watching Christmas movies in the main room because she starts watching Christmas movies like end of September. And I'm watching Narcos in the bedroom by myself. And, you know, you get in that Narcos hole after like five episodes where you start yeah. like, you, like I said, you just, I convinced myself yeah. I was somebody else. I yeah. was like being like really aggressive, uh -huh. you know, and yeah. like. Like grabbing like beers out of the fridge, like so angry. I'm Don Neto, just yeah. Uh, I'm just I don't best. know. It's just the best. It and really like is. um Diego Luna. Like, oh what my a stud. gosh, what, what a stud. I know. Love my him. Goodness. Love all right, him. so we're gonna do all kinds of spoiler stuff at the end of the show. Let's get into some news. Uh first bit of news. Uh so, I mean, shocker, we're gonna talk a little bit about Game of Thrones. <laughs> the Game of Thrones, so they shot a reunion special mm -hmm. uh when they started shooting this final season. So Sean Bean is in it and uh, uh, what's his name from from Bodyguard? Um, Richard Madden, who played Rob Stark, and you know everybody from the Red Wedding that, right. that got it. They shot a reunion special, but they're not going to air it on HBO. They're going to air it on the Blu-ray edition when you finally get the final season of the Blu-ray. Okay, so you have to buy the Blu-ray. You have to buy the Blu-ray to, to see the reunion, the reunion special. Show. Is that something that? You're like, oh, well, I have to get the Blu-ray now. Because for me, I'm like, oh, I mean, eventually I'll probably see the reunion special. It doesn't do anything for me where it's just a bunch of the characters sitting around on a talk show. Yeah, no, I don't care at all. <laughs> right? It's like, that's pretty normal, too. I feel like we should be used to that, right? Get the Blu-ray for, you know, extended this, Cast deleted scenes, delete, yeah. you know, director's cut. Most of that stuff is only available. Bloopers. The only th If they had Game of Thrones bloopers. Oh. And it was available only on the Blu-ray. Yeah, I would be the first person uh -huh. at my local Best Buy. <laughs> uh, no, I'm serious. I, I, that's about the only thing that. I I absolutely have to watch. I love bloopers so much. I always want to see what kind of things they are acting at that are the dragons. Right. Like, are they just like a big green screen box and somebody's in the background going, ah! uh, I know. <laughs> or it's like, they have to like, there has to be some crazy yeah. green screen. Like, it's not like your regular green screen scenes, like acting wise, no, because no, 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 they no. have to like anticipate so much crazy, large, over the top <laughs> movements and yes. roars and fire and things like that. And, and walkers and all that stuff or whatever yeah. they're calling them. That's, uh, that's why yeah, we white bloopers. walkers. We do need some bloopers. I think that we deserve that after after this long, right? I, know. I think maybe they don't want to like kill the magic of it, which I totally understand. But like the show's over, so sure. just give us bloopers. I agree. And what about like? Because you know that like a Khaleesi or a Peter Dinklage, they're acting at like this big green box, and then afterwards it's like, ah! I, yeah, it'd be hilarious. Right? It'd be amazing. Yeah, I want that. I'm but with you. what was this about? Oh, the reunion the, special. The, I was like, I already the, forgot. Yeah, the reunion special. <laughs> the reunion special. But yeah, no, don't care. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's move on. Uh, Luther, uh, season five of Luther, the trailer for it dropped. Now, are you a Luther fan? I don't know. I, I everyone in my family is. Yeah. It seems to be like seems. It seems to be a very popular show amongst these parts. But uh, I know, but... Harrison may like it. It's a little violent. <laughs> He's little too. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Nils is British, right? Yes. So he could be... He's British, so he hates British people. Oh, That's man. a thing. Is that a thing? I d yeah, I didn't realize. I but had no idea. Yeah, he, he does. Really? He really does. So he wouldn't but like he does love, John Luther. But he does love British television okay. because it's... It's better than American television. Oh, clearly, yeah. Of course. You know. Well, David um, Griffin and he have like a fan club. Oh, together. well, yeah. And like, I remember when David and Nils met for the first time at Comic Con a couple years ago, I was like, you yeah. guys are going to leave me for each other. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. clearly, I'm going to lose my friend. I'm going to lose my boyfriend. I'm sure they had like a pole dark. They talked so long. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my God. Well, I'm um, surprised that he hasn't turned you on to Luther then. Well, here's the thing is like, Luther is one of those shows that I've watched bits and pieces of when he was watching it. My cousins are also obsessed with it. Um, they're South African, so maybe it's some sort of like, you know, it's really big in certain places. Do you think it's it's big in South Africa? I think it's, I don't know, maybe it's just like Do they only... get a lot of BBC shows in South Africa? Is that a thing? Well, yeah, like okay. um, they get a lot of British television in general, you know, because right. we're still part of the Commonwealth. Right, right, so right, right, that right. makes the most sense that it would maybe be that influence. But I also just think that it's a show that once you get hooked on, it's really easy to keep watching. It's one of those shows. Okay. So I feel like maybe it's just totally coincidental that they 
started watching it when they were like a little bit younger, like 17, right. 18, you know. And this was their show. And this was their thing because it kind of reminds me of a show for teenagers. And I don't know if that sounds awful or rude, but like no. it's a little bit corny at times, which I usually like. Yeah. But it's not the type of show that you can just watch bits and pieces of. I think I would no, have no. to start from the beginning because when you do watch, you go in and out of it and you just see a little bit of like cheese over there and it's a little cheese ball over there. You're like, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's no, like no. trying Again. to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer in and out. You're right. just like, what? If you never watch the season and you and you're just, and like, you're not, pick, you know, you're not like invested in the I think characters. That's like every CW show. Exactly. Though. Like exactly. If you were a non Flash fan and you turned on like episode five, season three, you're like, oh my god, who watches this? Right, show? Right, because you're just like, this is so over the top and ridiculous. But mm -hmm. there are certain shows that are supposed to. I mean, Luther's not over the top and ridiculous, but they're supposed to have a little bit of this gloss, this cheesy gloss on right. it. That's just for like entertainment. Well, I think, too, is once you get to – it's not a crime procedural, but it does have – I mean, it's a crime procedural over six episodes right. or whatever. You have to keep upping the ante, and the more absurd you make these crimes, the more cheese it's going to become. Totally. You know Totally. I mean? It makes sense. And you don't – I love talking to cops about cop shows, and they're like, it literally 100 percent of the time doesn't work like this. 100 percent of the time. Right. Right? There is no way they solve a crime over – an hour episode, not say, whatever, but even you, you have homicides that are, have never been solved 40, 50 years, whatever. Right. Most homicides go unsolved is what people don't know. Mm -hmm. And, um, all of these crime procedurals say like a Luther, there's never like some crazy sexy killer out there. That's like putting tattoos on his bodies and everything. Like right, that. Right, I right. get that it's drama and I get all that stuff, but I would really like more of a cop show. That's just kind of like, <laughs> I know, right? Like, right? this sucks. <laughs> this is the worst. We haven't even got a <laughs> phone call today. Yeah. Like, my in my town outside Pittsburgh, we had, I think, like, maybe 15,000 people in our town and, like, seven cops. I can't imagine anything ever happened besides my mom speeding through our neighborhood. Right. Like, that was their biggest thing. Right. There was, like, a murder in our town in 1978, and the town still talks about it. And that yeah. Was, you know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Right. It's kind of like, I know, it's like I have so many different, like South Africa is totally, totally different. Right. But then, like, I lived in Naperville, Illinois, right. and like, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Literally nothing. The only thing that cops have is like Friday and Saturday nights are like, let's bust some high school kids partying. I know. But I, that's why I like live PD, because it's the crazy parts, right. you know, right. of the of the country. Yeah. And that's like some real, I could it's, fall into like live PD black holes. Well, I watched, uh, I just finished, there is this documentary on... Um, Audience channel. I watch a ton of audience channel, mostly because it's Dan Patrick in the morning and then into Rich Eisen. So it's like my get ready. I don't even know what the audience channel is. Audience channel is the direct TV network mm -hmm. that is on ATTU verse. So if you don't have direct TV, if you like direct TV channel one on one, ATTU verse. So you would have you would have audience. That's where like Mr. Mercedes is on. Oh, interesting. Uh, Louder Milk. That one where they're like two girls and a guy get married. I forget what that show's called. I didn't watch it. But they're, they're, I watch Dan Patrick in the morning and I see all of the, because basically their only commercials are for other shows on their network, right? Yeah. And so I am watching all these trailers. So I just start DVRing pretty much everything on audience. And I watch this documentary on audience about East St. Louis, which has the highest murder rate in the world. Oh my gosh. They have, they have like, and it's, it's basically, you know, it's like per person kind of a situation. That's right. how they get murder rates. So in 2017, or maybe, yeah, 2017, they had something like 36 murders. That's one murder per every 700, per, every 700 people. Oh, because it's such a small... Yeah, but the whole area is just like a shootout. That's... That's so sad. It's really, really sad. And it, it followed, you know, all the cops and then the kids who, you know, that live in these really tough times. And, and one of them gets out and all this kind of stuff. But watching the live police of it all is, again, so intriguing to me. I mean, I do a ton of work on WGN America, and their number one rated show all the time is cops. Well, it's, all the time. It, there's something so intriguing about it, right? Yeah. There's something so – I can't. I don't know what it is, but it, there is something very special about watching in live action – like on the front lines of because it's like so you're not used to it no. you know you're not used to it even if you do have experiences with living in different areas like I have plenty of stories from growing up in South Africa but yeah. it, it's so it's so different because it's like a different type of crime and like just the crazy things that people do yeah but I don't know man I just feel like that's the type of stuff we need more of I, I agree like maybe not on the audience channel <laughs> on the, well 
you, know you can show more on the audience channel and you can see like, more. You, you can, by all means, put it on the audience channel, but also put it like everywhere yeah. else. Put because, it on Netflix, put it yeah. on Amazon. I agree. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Amazon, guess what comes back on Thursday, on Wednesday? <laughs> Marvelous Mrs. Measles. Is that what you were going to say? It's the greatest Christmas present I of know, all. I'm it's, so excited about it. I'm so, you know what I'm really nervous about? It's what I get nervous about when I go to Shake Shack or In-N-Out is I'm really nervous when I finish that last bite how upset I'm going to be when it's at, season two is over and I have to wait a full another year. I know. Well, remember how I always tell my friends, I was like, I can't believe I have to wait so long. I've turned so many people onto The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Oh, yeah. Oh, they've like retweeted me at this point. I'm, pretty, I'm just trying to get them to notice uh, me so hard. Alex Borstein has direct tweeted me. Because when she won the Emmy, I was like, oh, no more deserving than Alex Borstein and everybody at Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And she was like, oh, thanks. And then we had a conversation. Oh, I was I like, love it. Yeah! I love it. Um, yeah. yeah, no, they're, they're, I just, I'm obsessed with all of Me them. Too. I'm totally obsessed. But yeah. um, what was I saying? Dream guest on my talk show would be Rachel Brosnahan yeah. and like Alex Borstein I, together. I love her so much. Oh I my just God. like wanted to put her in my pocket. I know. She's so cute. At the Emmys when they, when Tiffany Haddish mispronounced her name, that was the most upset I've been. I was like, you know, you better pronounce her name right. And, but that's the thing is like, she isn't, she hasn't popped off no. yet, which is why I've been trying so hard to like, all this I want girl is for her. Needs t- people need to see her. Yeah. She's incredible. Everybody's like, "What's the best show online?" What's be- I always every single time somebody asks me, "Best show on streaming service?" Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Every single time. Oh, absolutely. There's nothing that touches it because it's like it's easy to watch mm-hmm. one, but it's also like so incredibly smart mm-hmm. and funny and just like it's witty and and it's got it's got like I think sophistication. I'm re- it's. It's a sophistication not only in how it's written and how it's but how it's shot. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, how it's acted. I mean, that goes without saying because everybody won everything. But right. how it's written, but how it's shot. Yeah. It, like, it takes itself, it takes the situation and makes it that much better right. because it's shot so well. It's like the Daredevil series on Netflix, right? It could be right. cheese balls, like you said. And there are a lot of parts that are cheese balls. Uh-huh. But the certain parts that they don't want to be cheese balls, they shoot so well that it isn't yeah. cheese ball. Yeah, it is It is good in every aspect. You're yes. so right. But yeah. um, just Rachel Brosnahan is... I just I can't wait for Did you her. watch House of Cards? Did you ever watch House of Cards? I did, but I don't I didn't watch it at any point if she was on it. Yeah, the first two seasons she was Yeah, no, because I picked it up. I picked <laughs> You're it up. You're one of those? Yeah, I picked it up way later in the game. Whoa, okay. okay. Definitely didn't watch the first two seasons. Yeah, she's awesome in the first two seasons. She plays this like down and out prostitute and it's amazing. she is so good. I mean, everybody just needs to watch it. I know. I say it all the time online. Everybody needs to watch it. I think you I'm won't gonna, regret it. I think I'm gonna rewatch the first season before Wednesday, because it's only six episodes. I thought it was eight. Eight. Is it eight? I think it might be. I think it's eight. Um, but I'm going to rewatch it just so yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, because I've been watching so much Die Hard, I need a little bit of a break. Yeah, I remember the night that I finished with um, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. Yeah. Do you actually watch Die Hard like every day or something? Is that during, like a... During Christmas time, it's my favorite Christmas movie. But so. do you watch it every day? Or like, do you just watch it like when you want to? I come home and if I'm, like, because I work out at home, so I put it, I just put that on in the Is background. Is it still on TNT like every no, Saturday and Sunday? Those, my, I have to save them on DVR. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> From HBO, so why there's it, all why the swears you, and everything. Why did you DVR it? It's, you have, Look, like, when it's you click so... on IMDb, when you click on IMDb, that's the first uh, major advertisement. That's the homepage of IMDb uh, right uh, now. On IMDb? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Right? Oh, or man, do you think your dude. computer is just listening to you? I don't. And they change your Alexa? background. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, why would you DVR Die Hard as if it's like so hard to come by? You can literally find it on like every single thing right now. No, because they've they've kept because of uh, like licensing and stuff and whatever. A lot of stations aren't playing it like they used why? to. I don't know. Because last year I was I was just all Christmas long. I was like, I knew I should have DVR Die Hard the year before. I knew I should have DVR'd it. And then last year around December 10th, it came on HBO on like a Saturday night and I was like oh, oh my so god this is, this is DVR'd from last year from last year that's it stayed amazing. on it stayed on the DVR that's amazing and so I just come home and I, I flip it on and uh, the missus does not think it's a Christmas movie so we like compromise and watch Elf or something like that or Christmas Vacation things like that and then she'll go in the other room and watch her freeform Christmas movies or Hallmarks or whatever situation mm-hmm. and I'll just sit out in the Christmas Inheritance I'm, I have that one on my list Do I'm not you? gonna lie that's a Netflix one we, uh, she just watched that uh, Princess Switch or the w- with Vanessa Hudgens. Yeah, I haven't That's seen that Christmas one. That's a Christmas movie, though. I, that, I haven't seen that one. But I did last year I did watch A Christmas Prince. Oh. That one was money. Who was in that one? Nobody you know. <laughs> Nobody I know either. Nobody um, that I still don't know, actually. Like, I haven't never seen them again. But that's okay. What are you going to do? I'm sure they're doing fine. Yeah. Uh... I love I, I I mean I could talk about Ms. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel for a oh, I know longer. it's so good you I'm should excited. probably come back on 
uh, to like, do a review. Yeah, let's do a spoiler. Not next week because that we won't have been able to watch it all of it. It's because it comes out Wednesday, and I don't can't, underestimate. <laughs> well, I can't. If I go ahead and watch it before my, my wife, she'll leave me. Yeah, like, this is our show. Oh, I do remember that last year actually. Yeah. Um, you guys did watch it all oh, together, and then yeah. didn't we have a group? Was that the group text we had going yes. on at one point? Was yeah. it over Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? It was me, you, and Amanda. Yeah. Yeah, just about Marvelous ah, Mrs. Maisel. We're going to have to fire that group text back <laughs> up. Gonna, let's I'm light so it up. <laughs> yep. And now you have a lot more time to uh, <laughs> answer. I'm going to be like texting nonstop now. Well, do you want to come over and watch it with us? Yeah, I would love to. That sounds awesome. Oh, my God. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> She'd love that. She loves you so much. I love her too. Like we all do. The Makugas, big fans of the DeFreeze family. Uh so a trailer came out this week for this show called I Am the Night mm -hmm. with Chris Pine. It's a limited series on TNT, who knows drama. That's as right. We, as we TNT know. does know drama. They know that drama. <laughs> now, this kind of, it's a period piece, so it looks like it takes place in like the 50s, 60s. And at one point, they talk about the Black Dahlia murder. Now, I did the research, and it doesn't say anywhere in there that's based on true events. But maybe they are mentioning true events as to whatever. It kind of looks like L.A. Confidential with Chris mm. Pine and this young actress named India Isley. She was. She came into Collider Live a few weeks ago with Jason Isaacs, and she was in a movie with him. I forgot the name of the movie, but she was great, and she looks awesome in this. And it seems very, very creepy, almost like sinnerish. You know, the first season with Jessica yep, Biel, kind yep. of sinnerish. What didn't did TNT just do another limited series? Yeah, what um, was it? The one it was based on the book. Uh, yeah. Uh, crap. Yeah. I, and I want to look up the lead actor in it, but I forget. I think it's like Daniel Bruhl, maybe. Uh, and it was like everybody was talking about it because yeah. they and it took place in um, like 18th century London yep. or 19th yep. century London yep. kind of a situation. It was based on a book. Yeah, hold we on. Here we go. Here when we was go. that? Was that last year? I the like Alienist. The Alienist. Yeah. Yes, and that's based on a book. How did that one do? Uh, it did okay. It's like it wasn't. I didn't get a ton of traction like the Sinner did, like that first season of the Sinner did. But I know my, my, my mom and dad loved it because yeah. they read the books. Yeah. Uh, and I know a lot. I think David Griffin really enjoyed it because I mm. think he may have read the books. Mm -hmm. Miss him. Miss David Griffin. I know, me too. The best. Uh, but this kind of looks like something that will probably get some sort of nomination yeah. for something. If yeah. they're going to put Chris Pine in it and they're going to make it a period piece and it's going to be in L.A. and it's going to be based around something like this, this is what they're going for. Totally. And I feel like TNT also, like, good on them for... Jumping in the game. Jumping in the game. And yeah. even if they're the alienist didn't do as great, I do remember there being a lot of hype for it. Yes, so oh, it, tons. I feel like they are they are in the game. I mean, they not a ton of their stuff gets nominated. No, they but just people need, watch a ton of their stuff. Well, uh, TNT is one of those things I think it, it's been around for so long. Yeah. Like I said, like the joke about Die Hard being on, or right. like um, what is it? Is it the Green Mile? The Green Mile. It's like always on there. every Sunday. I'm All like, seriously, time. do you guys like know other movies? <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. There is so much green mile. I remember when I was pregnant and like hiding my pregnancy and like staying at home. Yeah. When you hit it for me at yeah. seven months. I know. I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> my bad. And then you came on the Josh McCougar show legit a month after you had your baby and was like, yeah, I couldn't come on because I had a baby. And I was yeah, like, yeah, you, you were did like, a now I know why you were blowing me off. Yes. Because you were asking me. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, got, I was uh, literally nine months pregnant. Yeah. I mean, I didn't uh, know you that well yet either. So the fact that you were blowing me off, I was like, yeah, she's big time in me a little bit. But then you were no. like, no, I was eight months It was months the total pregnant. opposite. I was just depressed <laughs> yeah. and like so ready to not be pregnant anymore. Yeah. Um, yes. When I was pregnant, I watched so much of The Green Mile. Like On I TNT. never, yes, I mm -hmm. never need to watch that movie ever yes. again. So I just think that TNT is a network that's been around for so long and that we are so familiar with it because of things like it plays all of our all of our favorite movies or some yeah. of the best movies yes. or like some of those cult classics are always on TNT. Always. If you're like looking for something during Christmas time, you're like, let me flip on TNT. Right. I bet something will be there. It's like a TBS type of thing. Yes. You know, but it's a little bit edgier. Yeah. Well, TNT knows drama and TBS is we're funny. Mm hmm. Yeah. And they're both wow, owned by Turner, so yeah. it's the same thing. It's just their comedy and their yeah, drama yeah, yeah. networks. Uh, I am kind of looking forward to this. I, I just feel like this might be one of those things where I'm like, oh, I am the knight, right? But because it's a limited series, maybe I'll give it more of a shot because I, I'm having a lot of trouble investing in the series that don't grab me right. right away. Limited series are good, though. They're real good. They give you a different type of motivation because you're like, it's limited. Right. Like so. this Escape at Danamora. Have you watched any of this? Okay. So do you remember a couple of years back when those guys escaped from that prison in New York and they were helped by the, the woman in, on the inside and the woman fell in love with both of the guys? This is a true story. No. So there's this prison called Danamora, 
right? Where? In upstate New York, like near the Canadian border. No, oh, and this is so, I'm you so shocked. Know. I've never okay. heard this. So Showtime has released two episodes, every single episode directed by Ben Stiller. Yeah. Ben Stiller. Yeah. Okay, and I, I'm, I, you I like that. The first episode is so well shot. I'm like, all right, I trust Ben Stiller on this mm-hmm. now. I've never seen, I mean, I feel like he's directed a couple movies that I've seen, yeah. but that, you know, and this, it's Benicio Del Toro, Paul Dano, Patricia Arquette. Okay. David Morse, like it's a so really, it's really, amazing. it's fantastic. Two okay. episodes, and, and it's a true story. It's a totally true yeah, yeah, story yeah. about this woman who helps these guys escape prison. So it's on AT. It's not on AT and T verse. It's on, on Showtime. Showtime, and it's a limited the series. The reason I have AT and T U verse is so I can still watch things like this. Yes, go and watch it. There's only two episodes out. The third one will be this Sunday. So do they release it weekly? Yeah, it's a weekly show. Dope. Okay, yeah. I'm in. And it's. Awesome. Okay. And That's knowing good. full well that it's only eight episodes, I was able to not only be really right. excited for it, but also snake Amanda into it so that we can watch it together. Yeah, especially it's when it's like a heavier show or like serious or you really have to pay attention. Like Pretty Little Lies. Or uh, Big Little Lies. Big Little Lies, exactly. Yeah. Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bad on that one. Uh, yeah, but you know, especially when you really, you can't like, you can't sacrifice a, just a few minutes no. to like go and do something else you have to pay attention because the story will you'll get lost yeah, well that's narcos too because it's in subtitles i can't exactly. have to pay attention yeah you have to read the screen i don't know enough spanish right to... so when it's a limited series or whatever that's definitely like more motivation to yes. try a show i agree and i always get so much shit when they're like you know Makua, daredevil could could should have been 15 episodes i'm like guys come on be serious with yourself every series that is a drama should be between eight and ten i'm just saying if Especially you're... when it's about superheroes yes. and it's on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> correct. That, that last three hours of a binge is brutal. You get Especially to episode... when, it's, when it's Luke Cage. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm still angry about that. I... Remember when I saw him in the elevator at Comic-Con? <laughs> you were going to say something. I was like, <clears throat> I was like, why am I so angry? Like, yeah. you are not Luke Cage, but I still hate you. <laughs> Come on, Mike Coulter. <laughs> yeah. I remember when uh, we were in Hall H and they announced that, Dar- uh, that Iron Fist was getting a season two and he stood yeah. up and was like this and everyone was like, eh. <laughs> like there was very little reaction from the crowd. Now, I mean, everybody's like, why did all those things get canceled off Netflix? Because 13 episodes is too many. It's just too many. I just remembered it wasn't Luke Cage I saw on the elevator. It was it's, Iron, oh, Fist. It was Iron Fist. Yeah, it was what's his face? Danny Rand. Danny Rand. <laughs> that son of a bitch. Yeah. He we got s- up on the same floor as me too. He was lucky. <laughs> I remember seeing his curly hair and being like, that kind of looks like. And then he turned. I was like, <gasps> this petite, dark, really dark haired girl. Yeah. Uh, she attacked me. Yeah, Michael. Your like, Iron Fist. Michael dude. would definitely be s- way safer than uh, yes. than Danny freaking Rand. <laughs> uh, okay. There's a new show coming out, uh, developed by Legendary. It's and uh, Seth Rogen and his production company with Evan Goldberg. It's about the console wars between Nintendo and Sega in the early 90s. It's Does this dope. interest you? Absolutely, 100%. Right? I'm in. You never watched Halt and Catch Fire? Nope. On AMC. There are a few shows that I recommend higher than, than Halt and Catch Fire. It goes like Peaky Blinders, yeah, Marvelous s- Mrs. Maisel, Halt and Catch Fire. You've spoken on Halt and Catch Fire before and Peaky Blinders, of course. Yeah, yeah. You would love uh, Halt and Catch Fire, but it has a similar thing to this because Halt and Catch Fire is about the birth of computers and like computer technology yeah, right? yeah. and video games and that kind of stuff. All of this is the kind of stuff that like is in a book somewhere written by a guy in a book that would never really cross my thing. Like, right. I'm sure people that work in video games yeah. would know it. Okay, now that I'm like unemployed, like legitimately, you mm-hmm. have to like resend me a list of the TV shows you told me to watch two, yeah. three years ago, <laughs> and I didn't listen to. Which I'm really sorry. One, <laughs> I apologize. I know that's so rude, um, but also like I want to watch them and like things like Narcos and yes. things like that that like, we would talk about and things like that. I never gave a shot to, yeah. and now I'm like addicted, and I've gone back. I ju- I'm on episode. Four now of the Ridge, the OG. Oh. That is how obsessed I am because I was like, Told you I was like twitching after it was how over. How good is season one of Narcos? How good is Wagner Mara as Pablo Escobar? I'm in love with he, Pablo Escobar. He is awesome. Fake Pablo Escobar, but, though, because yeah, real not, Pablo Escobar he looks kind of like a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> Fake <laughs> Pablo he's Escobar. Dead kill us. Uh, yeah, for sure. Fake Pablo Escobar. He he can get it. <laughs> <laughs> Fake Pablo Escobar can get it. <laughs> He's so hot. 
I love him. I love him so much. <laughs> that, that's going to be the title of this TV that's talk. so funny. I didn't even like think of that. That actually just came out of my mouth. So I know that that's how I genuinely feel. He's a nerd. Fake. He can get it. Like, for fake, real, though. Fake, fake Pablo Escobar can get it. And be like, oh, I'll click on this video. Yeah, yeah he I love is. It. So good. He's so good. Oh, so good. Uh, but this console war is about, you know, Nintendo and Sega. Because I think we had... We were one of those families that had a Nintendo original one. Fucking this microphone. <laughs> I swear to Christ. Uh, we had an original Nintendo. Yeah, me too. And then we got a Sega and then never went and then came back and got like a Nintendo 64. Yes. So it's kind of cool to see like what went on behind the scenes of yeah. those. Yeah, I'm just like interested because I don't know if it's just the way what we had growing up. Mm -hmm. But to me, I've always viewed Nintendo as being like the only OG and right. like the top of the top and nothing can touch it yeah. you know it's like even to this day i still but it's sega weird. sales sega sales were like very, very i know close. and then I, it always interests me because i'm like i wonder also just like being a different company and mm -hmm. going up against nintendo and like the fight to be like to find the top or whatever yeah that that must have been just one like that must have been crazy i know because like nowadays you have bunches of like there's tons of different things it is what it is you right. know and like an xbox and a playstation 4 i remember like when xbox one for came out at the same time as playstation 4 it was like there were multiple articles online about pros and cons of which one because it's so equaled out right you know I still and, think PlayStation's and you're better but you know but you're playing the same games too that's the thing. Right, like, you know, and they have, like, the exclusives, console? and people love this and that. But, like, back in the day when there really weren't a lot to choose from. Two. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I know, you had, exciting. like, some small computer games, and our Atari was, like, sort of, sort of around, but Atari never really got to right. it. I remember my buddy Donnie had a Sega Master, which was the Sega that came out the same time as the Nintendo, but didn't, like, had nowhere near the amount of explosion the Nintendo did. But then yeah. Sega Genesis came out. Right. And then Super Nintendo, and you, I mean, they were, you were kind of playing the same games, and Sega was a lot easier. The controller was a lot different kind of a yeah. thing. It was interesting. What was Sonic on? Sonic was Sega. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. And then you you basically were buying into, because you got Sonic for free with your Sega Genesis, or you got Super Mario Brothers for free yeah, with my your Super friend, Nintendo. Yeah, my friend, my best friend had, that's where I played Sonic. We played it every single day. It was addicting, and it was because the sound you did when you collected those damn rings. You yeah. And the, when he sped up and you got all those rings, and you and it just became addicting to get all those freaking yeah. rings. I know oh, what you're man. talking about. Yeah. Good times. Good, Good times. times. Uh, Warner Brothers gave $120 million to Ava DuVernay. What do you think about that? It's great. Give her some more money. Yeah. See She's what tight. she does. She's awesome. She's awesome. Yeah. And like, do you watch Queen Sugar on TNT? Did you ever see that show? Um, I have. Okay. But I'm not. I don't keep up with it no. regularly. I watched the first couple episodes. I, I think thought it was I did good. too. Same as Claws. Remember when we had to watch Claws? You know who's a huge fan of Claws? Deb Makuga, my mother. Really? Huge Claws fan. My friends are obsessed with it. Okay. They used to talk about it, like, religiously. Who, they, like Drew Dorsey? Yes. I could see that. And, like, Emil. And, like, like they're so obsessed. And I would Aaron go, Robinson, did she like Claws? I doubt it. I doubt <laughs> what it. What about, like, a Lily Marston? Did she like Claws? I don't know. I don't Does know. Does Kelly like Claws? No. Okay. I don't think Kelly's ever seen it. Yeah. I remember I, I just wasn't a fan, but they used to talk about it, like, religiously. I think my mom likes it because my mom hangs out at her, like, local nail salon. Like how yeah. people hang out at barbershops. Yeah. My mom hangs out at her local nail salon in Pittsburgh. This woman that owns his name is Dallas, and her they just talk drama all day long. Right. And Dallas is, like, 30, and so Did my mom, like, hear feeling young. that they have a new um, technology that's going to allow you to translate in, like, real time? And then I saw this meme, and the girl was like, or the guy was like, nail songs are about to be so lit right now because you have an app on your phone that they're working on right now that's going to come out that you, when you when it oh. hears languages, it picks it up. Which Holy is like, cow. when you go to a nail salon and it's owned by foreign people, you know they're talking oh, mad smack no, about you. 100%. Yeah. And then I'm just like so excited. I know, like, me too. What, what are you saying about me? Me too. Mm -hmm. so, or like sushi places. Because I don't know what they yell at me when I walk in. And then oh, they're saying they're saying welcome. It's oh, the same it's, thing. I don't okay. know what it is off the top of my head, but I can hear it in my head. I always get like and a some, shushi ya. It's like yamase. Like so, oh, there's yamase. something like okay. there's something first and then something. But then I want to know when I'm sitting at the bar what the chefs are saying to each other. Like when I'm like, hey, no sesame seeds on my spicy tuna. I'm allergic oh, to yeah, sesame seeds. Like, like f ass. this guy. Ass. Yeah, he, these aren't even sushi. This isn't even sushi. Uh, real quick, Cowboy Bebop got a live action thing at um, Netflix. I never watched it, but I texted Emma Fife. And she said, meh. 
so that's all the reaction I need. Oh, yeah. That's good. She's the anime, the resident anime. I, I take her word for it. Take her word Wouldn't for it. Wouldn't trust anybody else. And finally, before we get into the spoiler section of the show, mm-hmm. uh, there's this, this show called Criminal uh, coming to Netflix. And it's basically kind of like a 12 Angry Men. You know what 12 Angry Men is? 12 Angry Men won a bunch of Oscars back in like, yeah. the 60s. And everybody's stuck in the jury room. So... Uh, Criminal is basically all going to take place in an interrogation room. Each episode takes place in a different – so it's like an anthology series. I like it. But all within the same uh, interrogation room, like in a police station. Okay, and they're just like solving it and you're just listening to all these different stories. As they say, it's mind-bending. I like it. Yeah. Um, That kind of interests me. I love – I love in – it's always sunny in Philadelphia when they do – Total standalone episodes that are mm-hmm. all in one place. Yeah. So the episodes when they're stuck in the bar or the episode right, when the, they're stuck in like a doctor's office. When they had the, the flu, was it when they had the flu? Yeah. And they Hilarious. all were in Charlie's apartment. Yeah. Or Dennis's apartment. Yeah. Uh, the one when they're all stuck in the airplane trying to break the record of how many beers you can drink on an airplane. Yeah. I think is pretty funny. So <laughs> when they're all in one place, I find the the creativity behind the writing to be so much fun because you have you don't have the tropes of physical gags as right. far as outside. So yeah. seeing what you can do. So in it needs this... to be like super solid acting, you know, yes. when it's heavily like when it's dialogue heavy. Yeah. Another show I just watched that changed my life that I know you've told me to watch a gajillion times. True Detective. What the fuck? <laughs> You just watched it. At least season three is coming out now with Mahershala Ali. And I so know, and then up. I was like, should I watch season two? My mom and my dad were like, yes. My boyfriend was like, if you watch it, you're not doing it in the house. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. It's he was divisive. Like, yeah, it's and I was divisive. like, but, like what? Um, yeah, I watched it, and I'm not even kidding. It changed my life. Yeah. Like I. So you haven't on. watched season two? Okay. He won't let me do it in the house. <laughs> let me let me say this. Everybody crushes season two. First of all, season one of True Detective. Top ten all time of ever. Honestly, like it might be like in my top three. Yeah, it's it's that good. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, season two is not amazing, mm-hmm. but I, like I, the cast. I would I would urge you to watch it just to see because what it did for me was it changed my total opinion on Colin Farrell. Yeah, because I used to think he was just kind of like a douchey dude that wore beanies in ninety degree weather at red carpets, mm-hmm. and then I watched him in True Detective season two and without him that show that season of that's TV what, is nothing that's actually what Nils said too he was like Colin yeah. Farrell is it, it, he's fantastic he's yeah. like he's so good but it's like even more painful because of that because you're watching great acting and nothing to support it 100% but that makes me so sad because um, you after season one what happened was they rushed it they rushed yeah. out a season and you threw talent in there that really didn't go well together. You have Colin Farrell and Rachel McAdams who are amazing actors. Right. You have Taylor Kitsch who they wasted. Uh, you have a storyline that doesn't make sense. You have you have uh, Vince Vaughn as a mob boss that, yeah. that makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. You have his love story with his like there's just too many storylines yeah. and they're not enough focused on the actual crime so going sad. on. I know. I think I still have to watch I it. I think though. you should watch it just to know what everybody's talking about so you can have an opinion. Because if season one changed your life just like it did everybody else as far as th- if this is what TV is going to look like, we need to up our game. That's what I think that True Detective did. Then you will, can look at season two and be like, okay, well, they took a st- They took a yeah. shot. They took a shot. It's just like – it's shot. like a, it's – it's so unfair for people not to watch it because re- the reason I say that is because Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson, it is some of the most incredible acting you will ever see, I think, yeah. until something else comes along that blows my mind. Right. But Matthew McConaughey is unrecognizable in his like his entire demeanor, and yeah. Woody Harrelson has this even even more difficult job, even though Matthew McConaughey is a standout just because of his character and right. he does it perfectly. But Woody Harrelson does an even, like... In order to keep up, but not, like... You, he's normal. And, correct. And, like, he he's an ass, but he's sure. very normal. So, like, how did he make that character so incredible, but yet so normal? Like, he's supposed to be the it's normal one out of the two. It's, it's amazing. Mas- it's amazing. Everybody talks about the McConaissance uh, hitting its peak at Dallas Buyers Club. I will always fight that the McConaissance hit its peak at da- at uh, True Detective yeah. Season 1. Yeah, yeah. 1,000%. The scene in True Detective Season 1 when they're fighting in those projects. Yeah, that and shot. He, and he, that single shot. Mm-hmm. When he punches that dude with the gun and he's mm-hmm. on meth. Yeah. 
and they're chasing him through those the shanty like the the projects. Oh, that I had like a panic attack during that episode. I was like on the edge of the couch, like I couldn't breathe because I was so nervous. That's the one afterwards where like you stand up and stretch out because yeah. like you're so tense, you hurt like a back muscle. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, fantastic. But again, sorry, I didn't listen to you when no. you told me to watch it. Like <laughs> literally two years ago. The funny thing is, is that I think, like my wife. When I recommend things to her, she's like, whatever. And then somebody else probably was like, you know what we should watch? Like, True Detective. I'm like, you know what? who recommended that? Josh. I bet that's pretty good. And then, it does boom. happen quite a lot, actually, yeah. especially recently. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I did get a good recommendation. I, let's watch it. Let's watch it. <laughs> yep. There you go. There you go. It takes one more person. If mm-hmm. I'm the first one, it takes, you know, a backup. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Let's get into some spoilers here. Uh, real quick, I want to uh, – quick congratulations to three really good buddies of mine in comedy, Hassan Minaj. Asif Ali and Fahim Anwar. Their buddy Aristotle I don't know as well, but um, Asif and I started doing stand-up together for uh, way back when. We worked at Break.com before it became Defy Media. He and I uh, did a show called Newsfeed, which you did. And too soon. Too soon. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. And um, he, 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 they have a comedy uh, group that they've been doing YouTube videos for a long time. And Hassan obviously blew up. He's on The Daily Show and he's crushing. He's got his own show on Netflix called Patriot, Patriot Act. But they did a Comedy Central special, just a one-hour special of their sketch comedy, and they did some amazing, amazing stuff. So if you're on the Comedy Central app and you want to go out and watch it, check out Goatface. Yep. And it's all about – because they're all Indian guys. Or uh, So Asif is Indian. I think Fahim might be Pakistani. Uh, and they, it, they're, they, but they, like all their cultures kind of mesh together, and the way they present it, because I don't know a ton about their cultures, obviously, but the way they present it is so, so funny. It's oh, really, really, really well done. Cool. Uh, Spoiler alert, if you aren't caught up on The Walking Dead, do you watch The Walking Dead? You never watch The Walking Dead. No, I don't watch it anymore. My yeah. dad, for some reason, still has seen every episode. Your dad and I. Me, your dad, and Roxy Stryer are the only person, people that I know that still have watched every episode. Yeah, I know. So this week, uh, Jesus died. He was kind of came out of nowhere. Who's played by Tom Payne, who actually came into an episode. He's a friend of the show, came into mm-hmm. Collider TV Talk. I have a signed uh, pop funk that I think I gave to Perry when I got fired. But now that I work here again, I might take it back. Uh, <laughs> Can I have that back, please? Remember, it's kind of worth something now because he's off the show. But he said he wanted out of his contract. And he was not, like, happy about what they did with his character. Mm -hmm. And so when they told him they were going to kill him off, he was like, great, I'm out. Weird. Crazy, right? Yeah. Oh, I like when I like when they Ooh, spill tea. A little you know? bit of drama. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, he's like in the comic books, Jesus is this, and now you're turning him into like some kind of weak politician. Because he's when he does fight, he's a badass. But yeah. you don't see him fight enough. Because you see Michonne fight, you're like, I get it. She's fighting mm-hmm. all the time, mm-hmm. but you never saw enough Jesus. I agree. They wasted his character because he really could have been something cool. They wasted about three seasons of that show, which I watched. And now, I, I swear... I, Oh Walking my Dead, God. I swear, The Walking Dead is making a great renaissance. I'm not joking. It's making a good renaissance. Are you serious I am. right now? I am. I'm serious. Don't piss me off. <laughs> I swear to God. God. Remember when we like watched the we watched the finale and then we watched the premiere <laughs> of, was it season <laughs> when, seven? When they or? killed everybody with the bat. Yeah, we watched, that was the finale, <laughs> then we watched the premiere too. Uh-huh. And then I was like, okay, oh my gosh, like I was into it. Yeah. And then like... Th- Two episodes later, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember why I stopped watching this. Because nothing happens. But in this one, I'm telling you, there's things happening. This is ridiculous. (laughs) (laughs) I did not sign up for this. Not sign up for this. Uh, uh, Are you watching This Is Us still? No. Sinead. I I stopped. Oh, no. I know. Everyone's always like, why? I hate to say it, but I lost interest. I don't know. Really? Yeah, I really did. I don't know if I need to. Um, when when was the last episode that you saw? Was it last year's season finale? Um, maybe it's okay. been it's been a long time. Really? Yeah, it's been a long time. Okay. I know for sure I finished all of season one. Okay. And then somewhere in season two, I don't I don't even know if I finished it. To yeah. be honest with you. Okay. I'm, I don't think I did. Interesting. Are we in season three now? Uh huh. Like I see like bits and pieces of it just on like commercials and stuff like that. And there was a, a long time where I avoided it because I was like, I'm going to watch this again. I'm going to watch this again. Well, um, but I couldn't I couldn't bring myself to it. And then you watch something like True Detective and Narcos Mexico and you're like, whoa, where on my priority list is yeah. This Is Us? Well, I think right now because I've watched every episode, I am able to, I wouldn't be able to binge it. I don't think I'd be able to go back and binge it because it's I will lot. say it's a lot. 
It really is. One week, one episode a week, it's one of those shows where I, I'm glad I don't binge it because I don't think I could take e- the yeah, amount Yeah, but you of... also, like, really enjoy crying, you know? It's, I like, do. one of your favorite hobbies. <laughs> it, it is. I was sobbing. <laughs> like, my sister, like... I always tell her that. She's like, oh, my God, I'm crying. I'm like, you love crying. Like, this isn't surprising. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, but, but uh, so, it, you know, it's one of those things that you have to really enjoy, like, yeah. being emotional or like be in the right mindset to get emotional because like I can turn on I can turn on my emotions you know in a Real snap. Quick. Yeah, hey, you're a professional actress. You know I'm just like get into character. <laughs> this is sad. You need to cry. Um, <gasps> but it is a lot. Like it is a lot. Yeah. Well, I watched Dogs on Netflix. Oh, I want to watch that so bad. Okay, the first one sobbed mm-hmm. twice, maybe three times. Second one. I mean, uncontrollably in the bed. The, Amanda and I were both just like you have holding each other. No, but I'm obsessed with them. We're both like Good. holding each other. The sec, the third one, it's about this dog Ice, and he he lives in this little town in on Lake Como in mm-hmm. northern Italy. And my family went on vacation there a few years ago. And I and it's like Cal, it's like Mark Riley's dog, it's a golden retriever, and the relationship he has with the owner, and they go out in this fishing boat every morning, and he hangs her out, and it's this tiny town in Lake Como, which maybe has 40 or 50 full-time residents, 50 people on this tiny little town, everybody knows the dog, Ice, and you know when the tourist comes in, Ice is part of the restaurant, all this stuff, and I swear, midway through that episode, I said, if Ice dies, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, he doesn't die, thank God. <laughs> Uh, I'm now on episode four, but I, I'm three for three on sobbing um, about that's things. Cr- that's crazy. Uh, Nils is it's my it's my boyfriend's friend's show. Oh, yeah. So he was like, "Oh, my buddy did this show on Netflix. Everyone's been talking about." Yeah. And I was like, "What's it called?" And he's like, "Dogs." I was like, "Literally, everybody's been talking about <laughs> yeah, that." Everybody. He's like, "Okay, let's watch a little trailer." Um, my boyfriend is obsessed with his German Shepherd, yeah, he's got a German rightfully Shepherd. so. Yeah. He's the best. Yeah. But uh, I I don't know if it's a good idea for him to watch it. It is heart wrenchingly heartwarming. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I want to watch it all. I really do. It looks oh, great. Oh my god! I watched the whole trailer. We both looked at like looked at the TV and looked at each other, and I was like, Phew. "Yeah, we got to be in the right mindset to watch that because uh, there's gonna be a lot of tears." <laughs> Tons of tears. And don't. I was watching the uh, the first episode, and I was brushing my teeth, and I started crying so hard that I spit uh, toothpaste out of my nose. Oh my it was all up in there. <laughs> oh my it god! From, same with the dog's purpose. That one got me as well. Anyway, uh, spoiler purpose. alert, watch Dogs. Okay. It is really, really good. I will, I will. Uh, finally, finally we are at the show. Let's. We got about like seven to eight minutes. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Narcos Mexico. Cool. Spoiler alert, if you guys haven't finished Narcos Mexico, uh, if you guys are like, oh, it's season four, it's not. It's actually a reboot, a re like a resetting of the timeline mm-hmm. back to when... Um, you know, like the Mexican cartels started. So yeah. the Colombian cartels, you know, Pablo Escobar, the, the defeat of Pablo Escobar, the Cali cartel, that hasn't happened yet. Right. So this is the beginning of the Mexican cartels. The Colombia is still happening. Yes. And so, spoiler alert, we're going to go into all that stuff yeah. if you haven't watched it. Or you're saying, I don't want to watch those other three. You can start this again. I, it's exactly what I did. So This is yeah. the first thing of Narcos I had ever seen. I had no idea there were even three seasons of, of the other one. Oh, my God. But I was like, I was like, talked about it so many um, times. I said I was sorry. (laughs) Sorry. I said I was sorry. Um, No, yeah, it is. It's a. It's a shame. Like I, I am. I am disappointed in myself. Well, yeah. Um, But yeah, I watched this one from the get go. I had never seen any anything of Narcos before, and I was. Took me about twenty minutes to Mm -hmm. like totally Mm -hmm. feel, like I. Like I was transported somewhere to like, Mexico. Yeah, and then like by episode three, I was like, I'm Mexican. Yeah, like nobody can convince me otherwise. <laughs> and then by the end of it, yeah, I was like full on. I was like, I am Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> this is me now. <laughs> I'm moving to. Mexico. I am Mexican. And then like also like I just I went to Mexico this year and I was oh, like did? yeah and like I went to Puerto Vallarta. This is spoilers, oh, right? Oh, yeah. So I went to uh, Puerto Vallarta this year in August. That's where Don Neto dies. I know. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, dude. Like, yeah. I wonder. If Coming I would, full yeah. circle. My boyfriend's like, you're reaching so hard. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Puerto Vallarta. You stayed at a villa for <laughs> five days with like a personal chef. This is not the same effing thing. And I was like, yeah, it is, Pretty man. Close. It is. Pretty close. Um, but yeah, it is absolutely incredible. I think they do such a great job of... You know, did you know anything about the story? Like, did you know about the agent that died at all? Like, no, I, I didn't know any of no, that. No, and yeah. I'm I'm glad I didn't because like I had no idea. You, I didn't see Pena dying. 
Uh, Michael Peña or Ka- Kiki Camarena. I and did neither not did see I. That. I was like, oh, he's not going to die. There's no way. <laughs> um, and I also, I really appreciated the idea of it being a voice, the narrator's voice being the completely new character that'll set up, yeah. you know, the story moving forward. Also, the narrator, Scoot McNary, who they, you see in the final episode, yeah. uh, getting the guns and down in that thing, that situation. To fight, basically, they're fighting like an yeah. independent war. He is the lead in Halt and Catch Fire. Oh, really? Interesting. There you go. Nah, another right. reason to watch Halt and Catch Fire. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on my list of go. shows I need to watch. Put it at the top. Three years later. <laughs> I will. Cool. I will. Cool. Um, but I have to finish Narcos now. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Um, but yes, it is, it is so good. But I, they do such a great job of painting um, Diego Luna's character, Gallardo. Mm-hmm. Felix. Yeah, Felix Miguel and Hell Gallardo. Yeah. Told you I'm Mexican. You're good. Um, <laughs> you do such a good job of, you know, representing him in, like, this cutthroat way. Yeah. And then, like, seeing all these other sides to him as it goes on, he ends up being, like, a good bad guy yeah. in a lot of ways. Where it's like he's so smart and he's so business oriented you're almost like oh like that's yes. why you're a terrible person is right. because like you understand that you need to sell a lot of drugs to make a lot of money it right. makes sense to me and it's like really crazy but it's also something that i love about narcos in general because even watching watching it last night when um i'm in like episode two or three last night of mm-hmm. escobar or yeah the original and just yeah. like watching them like talk about like Hitler and they make jokes and then all of a sudden they start like laughing. Yeah. You know, and they're like, oh, eh. and then they're like, you know, beating somebody up or killing somebody and then he's walking the woman out of the park. And it's just like Narcos Mexico does yes. the same exact thing. Uh, it does, all of these do the same thing for me. It makes me root for the bad guy. Right. Which I love. I love rooting for the bad guy. Mm-hmm. You should, a show is really, really good when you have bad guys that are worse than other bad guys and bad guys that you literally love so much right. they're on the same level as the good guys what's crazy about this whole situation and i know this is obviously not a popular thing or like a crazy thing to say but if had we never started a war on drugs and we had you know i know you can't let illegal drugs through or you were able to like regulate it or monetize it or something like that or tax it or put it through something I, again i know that's not possible none of this would exist this war these this violence this insanity mm-hmm. of the drug trade wouldn't exist but that's in another world. Right. So in this world, the reason I think I root for the bad guys is because I look at it as like, listen, is weed that bad? No. No. And they say that, too, in the very beginning. Right. It's like, well, years from now, weed was going to be legal. We all knew it. Right. You know. So when they get into cocaine, and obviously when you get into the harder drugs like heroin and cocaine, that's when things get out of control. Right. I think for me... There's there's three parts of the show that I that sold me 100 percent and I, I was kind of I was just shocked by that shot of the marijuana field mm-hmm. when you first see like what mm-hmm. that did so from, the, from their helicopter when they yes. first fly over it yeah. yeah when Rafa uh, hit like grenades and the water spouts out and then he's finally able to like burn it you know build his his Taj Mahal of yeah. weed yeah it's amazing Rafa's character. Uh, is that character you need in every one of these shows, the wild card, the yeah. idiot, the insanity, the drug addict, that kind of situation? Yeah. I kept calling him like Cartel Bruno Mars. Yeah, <laughs> totally looked like him, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the love affair with the girl. Love that. It was it was such an amazing thing, right? Yeah, and then you end up like really hating him. I liked him in the beginning. You Me end too. up really, really hating him and really viewing him as like such a such a crazy you know mess up and it's almost like you you it's like justified what what Felix does to him and it's not and like that's also another aspect of it's the show it's a business thing it, yeah. all Felix looked at his business and you right. know when he says to his wife I don't need you anymore yeah, and that also, was heartbreaking too when, when the reveal of how many women he's been sleeping with I didn't see that coming because they never made it out for him to be a playboy which right. they do in like every other drug movie yeah I was like oh the, um, Nils was like I bet you anything he's buying them gifts because those are like the, his um, the his friends wives like his friends who have died or working for him or died throughout the drug wars yeah. he's like trying to say sorry and I totally believe that because that's how they paint him such a family man yeah but it's also like really important to note that like you see the violence that was going on and it is wild it is devastating and it's sad mm-hmm. and just to see how many people died because of a freaking like war on marijuana yeah. it's nuts like it's enough to just make you sit there after every episode and be like how many people did i just watch die and then you have to remind yourself that it's freaking true like this really happened yes and people lost like 
hundreds and hundreds of people died. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. Like, it's actually insane. And the thing that gets you at the beginning of the, of the show is that there is no end to the war. No. There is no winner. There's no anybody in this whole thing because it's never going to stop. It's never going to stop. And that that is what is always is tough about these shows. People are like, oh, I know what happens. These people die and, you know, so-and-so dies. and It's still very, very interesting to watch because, you know, I know it's a fictional dramatization of the whole situation. But mm-hmm. the way that it, it is portrayed mm-hmm. is so well done uh, and it makes everybody look so corrupt. Like – Colombia in the first three seasons, so corrupt. Mexico in the season, it is the most corrupt place And, like, the United ever. States also, just, like, not... It's just everybody is at fault. It's everybody's right. fault for why it got so bad so fast. And, like, that's part of the... the what keeps you going while you're watching because you're like, when are the Americans going to start listening yeah. to, like, their people are trying to do something good right? and their own country doesn't support them? Nothing. It's insane. Yeah. There's... So do you think in season two, because we have the reveal of all, you know, like what's going to happen, do you think season two we take a time jump and start following El Chapo? Because you, you see him say it's Chapo, Chapo, Chapo. Lead, it's definitely going to lead to to Chapo, but I don't yeah. know because, like, are we thinking that there's going to be three seasons to this one? If there's two seasons, yes. I could totally see this next season being a, pretty much a continuation because, yeah. like, in real life, that guy Gallardo, he went to jail, and yeah. then like when he did, that's how that's Chapa. how Chapo like rot like rose, right? Because right? he gave him some of it. I would like to see like that portrayed a little bit. Mm-hmm. If there are three seasons, there's enough time to do it because because El Chapo's on trial right now oh, I in know. the United States, in New York. In New York. I was like. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was there, <laughs> my boyfriend's like, oh, we finished it. Stop I made it. us go back to the hotel and watch it. He's like, are you serious? I was like, yeah, it was like Saturday night. He's like, you were so lame. I was like, it's fine. So then he, I was like, where is he? And he was like, oh, he's in jail. And I was like, I know. Isn't he like in, on trial right now? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, they have New York. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> can feel him and he's like i hate you um i want to see that that switch because yeah. he is such a such a good guy in the in the first season of narcos yeah. mexico he is truly he's, like loyal he loves his friends so much mm-hmm. he's the one every time they get attacked he's the one that's like come on rafa come on let's go you guys right. let's go we have to go like get in the car he's right there yeah. and it all started with like gallardo finding him right and it's just such an interesting story i want to kind of see the rise of that like i want to see the switch Agreed. and i want to see like the evilness because we know He's crazier than Gallardo oh, ever, ever was. One hundred percent. And uh, you know, I was listening to a couple podcasts about what's going on and why, how he came to power. And it was the tunnel system that he just started building all over Mexico and digging tunnels into America, and how like the digging, the thought of all those tunnels of where that goes. Because right now they're putting all the drugs in trucks. Right. Once they found out that they were putting them in trucks wherever they were finding them all over the place, and Chapo was like, "I'm just going to dig tunnels everywhere." Right. Right. It would be really cool if they also did enough storyline of, like, how many times he's escaped. Like, that's also, uh, like, no, right? it's almost, like, funny because it's so ridiculous. But this man has escaped from prison so many freaking times. times. Yeah, like, that? like, but, like, that doesn't happen. When you're one of the most wanted criminals, escaping once is impossible insane right the idea that he escaped multiple times with help from different people like i want them because that's not something they talk about as much no. you know yeah i want to see that i want to see it i want to see too. it i want to see like how that's even possible have you ever seen uh the pictures of el chapo's bathtub that he snuck out under yeah it's cr- i mean the amount of of material for narcos mexico is way more than i think what in Colombia, because the cartels were eliminated really quickly by the United States, even though there's still a ton of cocaine coming from Colombia. Uh, but the actual pipeline obviously runs through Mexico right. to get to the United States and Canada. There's a show coming out on WGN America called Pure about a Mexican cartel running cocaine through the Mennonite mafia up to Canada. And Mennonites are basically like one step above Amish. So it's right. Amish don't do anything electronics. Mennonites do do are allowed to but they're still like a singular people that kind of stuff very very interesting the amount of material that goes on and that we can see out of narcos mexico mm-hmm. i mean i'd love to see three even four seasons because i don't know where you go after this where where do you go is there a european drug trade is there right. a russian is there you know like where where do we go from from here but this this season so totally good. brought me back and everybody's like oh season two of season two of narcos the first narcos is okay. Mm-hmm. Season three, great. Season one, 
perfect. Mm -hmm. And this season for me of Narcos Mexico was just fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm really glad. I'm really glad that I got into it. It's just really, really good. Listen to Josh McCougan more. Often. I know. I know. I will. I will. I, I loved will. having you on the show. I loved having you I back, Sinead. I loved being here. It was so much fun. You're the best. You're the best. Uh, tell the good people where they can find you. I'm sure they um, where is my? Is that my camera? Hey, good people. Um, I'm online at Sinead DeFries. I also have a YouTube channel. Um, I believe it is <laughs> YouTube. I think it's like Sinead underscore donuts or something like that. Sinead donuts. I think so. Uh, we should but, do some videos. Uh, uh, hell yeah. yeah. Um, it, I just started it. It's just, just started. Fresh off fresh off the, the, the presses. The presses. I was like, what is the What's equivalent? The YouTube yeah, there isn't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure that out. Yeah. But yeah, I have a YouTube channel, and um, the link for that is in my bio on Instagram, and that's at Sinead DeFries. Now that you have a little more time, we're trying to get you in here more often, maybe figure Love out to. some stuff to do. Love uh, to. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga, Twitter and Instagram, The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. You guys can check out Collider Live every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Collider Sports Time as well, Collider Sports Book, Collider TV Talk. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast feed, all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, I'm on WG in America every single week as well. So. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Sinead, for being here. Thank you here. so much for having me. I loved me. having you on 1.0, and I love having you here on 2.0. Uh, as always, put down the book, pick up the remote.